Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is clueless. Clueless. And like that little emoji, maybe you've thrown your hands up and said, I have no idea what to do. As we come to Daniel chapter 2 today, we'll find out that the wise men that the king was speaking to, that's exactly what they did. In fact, everybody around was throwing their hands up. What happened is Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream, something that really disturbed him, and he decides that he's going to call everybody in. And he's all his wise men, his astrologers, all these guys, he says, hey, y'all all come in. And it would be normal for him to tell them the dream and then them to give him an explanation or an interpretation of what the dream meant. Of course, in this season, in this culture, interpretation of dreams was huge. That was, uh, it was a big thing. And so there was a lot of seriousness given to dreams and to their interpretation. So it, it really troubled the king. So he brings them all in and he has a, a feeling that all these things are very important. So he's, he's a wise king. I'll give him that much, right? He, he's discerning at least if we want to, maybe wisdom is a stretch, but he is discerning at least that he would say, okay, I'm not going to tell you what my dream is, but what I want you to do is you to tell me the dream and its interpretation. So here, here what he says at the beginning, we're actually going to look at two parts of uh, this passage today. So first start in verse 7 down to verse 11. It says, they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will give its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know for certain that you would gain time because you see that my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till time, till the time has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered, answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of a magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. As a result, the king flies off the handle and he says, fine, we're going to kill all the wise men. Y'all can't tell me you're not as wise as I thought you were. So we're going to kill all the wise men, all these astrologers, all this whole group of people. That's it. If Y'all can't give me the explanation. Well, how about Daniel and his three friends? Remember, they were in that group of wise men. So when the word gets to Daniel and uh, he decides, he says, wait a minute. He says, I, I believe y'all are getting ahead of yourselves. So he says, give me just a little while. Tell everybody to hold on. Give me just a little while to see if I can find out the interpretation of the dream and find out the dream itself. Now, it's not that Daniel had some hidden knowledge, as he later says. It's not that he was smarter than anybody else. It's not that, uh, you know, he had a, an inside connection with Nebuchadnezzar that gave him uh, an inclination as to what the dream would be. No, as you follow along, you find that Daniel and he, he gets his three friends. They come together and pray. And when the Lord answers their prayer and reveals to them the, the dream and its interpretation, they break out into praise. So then Daniel, obviously, because now not only did he, was God's word able to save not only their lives, but the lives of all these wise men, he gets, makes his way back to the king. And, and you know, it would be very tempting for him to say, oh, king, I have figured it out. I am the man. But that's not what he says. If you pick up verses 27 and the first half of verse 28, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. Oh, and I love this part. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days? Then Daniel 
continues on and tells him the dream and tells him the interpretation. But he is quick to say who it came from. Now, having said all that today, even as we wrap up this time, you say, well, wait a minute, what does that have to do with me? Well, the, the one thing that we can take from this is that we need to trust God. We need to trust God. Because if God put us in that position, right? Daniel was placed in that position by God, elevated because of his faith to a position like that, then he could have to believe and have to trust that God was not going to let it go away that quickly. Not without first pray. That's the key, isn't it? Trusting God, but then praying, trusting God for the answer. And then let's also take the trust that it took and the faith that it took for Daniel to go before the king because he could have been wrong if it was himself, but because he knew it was the word of God. He stood strong. He stood firm before the king, risking his life and the lives of others because he knew that the word of God was true. We live in a world and a culture today that is clueless. Everybody around will say there's no answer. There's not a person on earth that knows this. There's not a person on earth who could explain all this. And Daniel says, yeah, I agree with you. Because that God is in heaven. He's the one who knows all. And today you and I need to stand on the word of God faithfully. We, don't we live in a clueless world. We don't have to be clueless ourselves. What we need to do is stand firmly on the word of God, take him at his word. And oh, let's not forget that. And most important part of all this, to come to him in prayer. If you ask God for strength to stand on his word, he will give you his word. He will give you over and over again the promises that he has already shown you. So you don't have to be clueless in a clueless world. Let's go to the God in heaven. Who knows all. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.